And today I'm interviewing Christina in London. And Christina is originally from Germany. And Christina and I already know each other a little bit, so to speak, because Christina is my sidekick. And I always find that so fancy to say that my sidekick, whatever that may be, um, on the daily uh, talk show on Clubhouse, the multi-potential life dudes drinking coffee with, la la la. And there you are every Tuesday together with me and we have so much fun on Clubhouse. And then Irma, my girlfriend said, you need to interview Christina because she's very interesting. And here we are, here Christina. <laughs> wow. Hi, Perry. Thanks Hi, for having Christina. me. Hi, Christina. How are you doing today? How is it going? Good, thanks. It's a, uh, what, Thursday, so week's nearly over. I'm excited for the weekend, but uh, it's been yeah. good because it's been a, you know, as, as, as the, these weeks are quite a lot of things going on, checking in the conference later, uh, attending a great talk after that. I'm attending, not giving one, but um, yeah, yeah. it's, it's going to be a action day starting off with an interview with you. So Yay, okay. it's so cool. <laughs> and you have to explain the viewers that this behind you is not for real because then out of nowhere, there comes a bottle of water or whatever it is. It's okay can you do that? Look at that. Uh, <laughs> it's hilarious. So basically, my virtual magical office behind me. It's amazing. So you, what do you have? Like a blue screen behind you or something or green? <laughs> what is it? No, I don't. I'll post, you, I'll post a picture later on my actually behind the scenes. But oh, behind the scenes with Christina. <laughs> oh, that would be funny. Please do. I would love to see that. <laughs> this is... Is this the, the surrounding you would choose if you would have your own office? Would it be like this? Um, no, I think it would be a bit more bright, a bit more colorful, you know, a bit more warmer colors normally. But yeah. as a virtual magical office, it does its, you know, it does what it's It does its to. trick, <laughs> right? So we spoke about something already earlier this week on Tuesday, of course, on Clubhouse. I always ask everybody, where is your being a multi-potentialite coming from? Check your parents. I had an interview. So funny. I had to think about you, Christina. I was interviewing a, a very cool dude in Australia this morning. Interview's coming up soon. He's really funny. And I said to him as well, I said, how was your childhood? You know, and, and with your parents, how did it work out? Is one of your parents a multi-potentialite? He said, no, 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 no. No, well, I, I see, when I think about it, my father was an architect, a, a carpenter, uh, and he made the list longer and longer. And it's like, oh, and you're like, wait a he second. Was a multi -potentialized. I think he was a multi potentialite. So I was cracking up with that because that happens a lot when I ask that. But I asked you the same question. And what was your answer, Christina? My parents are not <laughs> at all. And I mean, we can go through it. But uh, both of them met when they were in banking and did like apprenticeship in banking and stayed in banking for quite a while. My dad moved to like a big transportation company eventually with his career. And then they ended up buying a company and just running that. But no hobbies. I mean, well, that's like probably not fair. Like they, they love their garden and they work in the garden and they improve the house. But like no hobbies other than that, really. Um, they do, used to play a sport both of them as well tennis but i don't think that's a more potential light because people do sports as well and yeah, not more it's, it's possible to do one more than <laughs> yeah. one thing yeah it's okay and, and, yeah. you know but yeah so there is nothing no no different interests no different hobbies absolutely nothing and nothing that i'm aware of that would be my grandparents at least in a way that it could have influenced me either so no. uh yeah i have in, in my direct environment, family environment, no potential light. My brother as well, straightforward. Um, he's an airplane mechanic and plays tennis as well <laughs> on his free time. But yeah, no kind of no different hobbies, nothing. So it is. So mom and dad, out. if you're watching, I love you, right? Everything is fine. <laughs> you did nothing wrong. Everything is okay. <laughs> you're doing everything fantastically. No, but seriously, when you look back at your childhood, I remember my childhood that I could be like all over the place and and one of my parents would always say like slow down you know and can you sit still for one second please and can yeah, you two of them <laughs> you had two of them right yep. <laughs> so how was your childhood was it as horrible as it seems now 
<laughs> well, I hope my parents are not listening. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it, it's interesting. I think I had what helped me. I had a good teacher in primary school. And, you know, I was a kid being really interested in different things and interests. And she nurtured that a little bit. That helped, I think. So you have that balance, at least because in Germany, in primary school, you're kind of with the same teachers for four or five years. So they have one class oh, wow. and, and work yeah. with it. So yeah. which helped because you then have like a person that nurtures that a little bit. And you know, mm-hmm. it helps you different interests. And it's interesting as well, because these teachers are not just your history teacher or your German teacher. They, are, they do different job, subjects as well. And you might have a different music teacher or something. So that helped probably. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, it's, 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 it's been hard. And I, I don't know, if, as a kid, I think naturally they have a lot of interests, right? And for me, a lot of it was also escaping into reading and books, because then you have kind of as many interests as you want, right? And you make up your fantasy friends as well and have your own adventures with them. So that's all great. Um, it's been interesting more as well, growing older and still having that. And I think I kept on that feeling of, you know, I have to be the straightforward German, that one career, being a specialist, up until kind of probably with university I wasn't even my parents wouldn't even have wanted me to get to university for them probably if it would have done like some apprenticeship that would have been way better um yeah. but I went to university and left that quite open and then I still was kind of thinking oh I could become a consultant like a management consultant because I started business and marketing and was like because I think for me in terms of if you're a multi- multi-potentialite and have to choose a job consultant is probably not a bad one because you work on different projects all the time so Did you already kind of, knew you were a multi-potentialite back then? No, I didn't. I didn't. No. But I was looking what kind of jobs would work for me, right? And yeah. kind of, I think instinctly it was like maybe consultants because they work on different industries and different things, yeah. which is quite nice. So you don't narrow it into one thing without realizing, you know, I'm a multi-potentialite. And that just came a little later when I moved to London, actually. And I couldn't even find, and maybe that's also companies feeling that in a way, because I could never find after uni a job that would have just taken you on, you know, like the kind of crappy jobs where you then start with one thing and make your oh, way up. That's interesting. <laughs> that's interesting what you're just saying. Maybe they can feel that. Do you think that's the case? If, you, if you're talking to know. a recruiter, do you think they have a feeling like, oh my God, here we go again. This is someone who is jack of all <laughs> trades, focused on everything not the specialist we're looking for I, I don't know it's hard to say because I mean I did apply for a lot of jobs and I just yeah. you know after uni and then I didn't do much less than other students I probably didn't do much more than other students I had like my my university degree from Germany um, I had a master in London as well and you know it's so different languages I did do an internship or two I, I worked as a student consultant and I still didn't get one so they didn't I don't so know why weird, what I did right? wrong. so, you're, you're so like, I kind of was, look at me <laughs> yeah exactly and yeah I'm like okay what I'm going to do now so that's when I kind of was forced in a in a way to look at freelance because I, I ran into like a record label that gave me a job but that job didn't wasn't enough full time it didn't pay I mean it paid six pounds at the, per hour back at the time and yeah. so I needed other work to sustain my income but that kind of put me in a position where freelance and have had up to like three jobs at the same time with different projects. And that's kind of how probably it started. And I always try to go back to like that normal way, but like I should have one job. I should have one career, right? I should work up because I didn't realize that's actually not what I want by that time. It was so much because yeah. A, for my parents, they kind of expect me to do, you know, that will have that one stable job. Be from like a German culture and even speak with my friends it's you know in Germany you have like your one two maybe three jobs yeah the expectations from your parents your friends and the culture you were living in was like Christina needs to be, <laughs> yeah you need to be successful you're amazing you're super clever you're beautiful and you just need to be there successfully in the banking world or, or advertising yes, or whatever exactly. you can think of what do you thought it was what when you look back at that time what do you think was the problem the problem for what for the uh, uh for the headhunters for the hr people not to hire you what looking I, back I, at that perspective what do you think I was wrong to be fair i don't know because it's still I, no. like it's been more interesting after like recent well three years ago i tried to move back to germany and find a job there and it's so weird and it was a bit clearer because then they definitely now can't deal with like a generalist and all the different things I've done even a job 
that in her job description was looking for someone who can wear different hats and do different things because yeah. they work for like a company starter, yeah. right? And I was like, so that's you were me. like, I can that's do me. this. This Look is at me. That. Yeah. And then they're like, but, yeah, no. no, you're a bit too general. You had done a bit oh, too many really? things. I'm like, Jesus. seriously, you're asking for this. You're asking for someone who can wear different hats. That's me. And they're like, yeah, but what do you want to do? I'm like, Whatever you whatever. Can, however whatever. I can help you, <laughs> yeah. whatever comes in, I can do that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, even for them, they don't like general, that. No, right? <laughs> they don't like that. If you if you answer, I can do everything, whatever it takes, whatever you need, bring it on to me. I will solve I'll make it. it. Happen. <laughs> well, I would be very pleased to have people like that in my company. It's weird, right? Specialists don't get that. They don't. don't they don't understand. It's weirder. No. No, and I think the best thing was in an interview as well for a job. I got eventually offered. I couldn't take because we couldn't move. But um, that was with one of the owners. And it was for a digital agency. And, mm -hmm. like, he had my CV on there. And I probably have, like, maybe 10 different jobs on the 10 years experience, right? And obviously, I don't put all of my jobs on the CV. No, no we um, don't do that. <laughs> I, highlight, I highlight that to, the, you know, relevant jobs and show the relevant experience. Yeah. But he had 10 years of experience and my cv is so different from probably the standard german cv you know what he asked me in an interview no <laughs> what my results was and my math a levels and i'm like do you know how long is this ago i can't remember are, are we talking the same language here that's so <laughs> weird <laughs> Is this how on what you base of giving me a job or not? Like what my math were from like my school results, which is like. Yeah, Did you ask ago. him that? Did, was this your response to him? Did you really? No, I mean, no. my, my oh, look shit. probably was very perplexed. I'm like, is this yeah. what you? <laughs> mm, seriously? Me? But yeah. you wouldn't expect that question, really. Like maybe no. for after your for your credit job, okay, but not after like ten years of experience. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. So. Uh, curious why did you move to london to start with so i guess like from the way i, I finished my, my degree and it, it was funny because normally i wanted to do a master's and then come back to germany to finish my degree but with my parents being really like no you have to have one thing you have to have finished one thing so finish your degree first in germany and then go to london and like, what okay. did you study christina what did you study sorry so business administration in Germany, and then I did a okay. master in marketing in London. So I'm like, because okay. I came to yeah. London for a weekend once, and I was like, you know, when you come to a city and you have a feeling you want to live in the city, that was yeah. London for me when I was, I think, yeah. first time when I was 16 with my mum, like, I love the city there so much. I want to live here. And then when I done my uni in Germany, I was like, I don't really feel like entering work for us yet i'm not ready so i want to do a master's anyways in an english-speaking country so that's when i went to london to study and then was when i finished it was 2011 on 2012 they were open to see the olympic games in london so mm -hmm. i'm like there's no way i'm leaving if next year i like i live so close to it it's it's all gonna happen i'm not gonna leave i'm gonna stay yeah. here for the olympic games and i even got a job yeah. working on there and it was the best job i ever had yeah um and yeah and then kind of london as a place year after year like do you stay another year? Okay, I stay another year. One more year, one more year, and now it's nearly 11. <laughs> Amazing, right? And, and I know we talked about relationships as well. So your partner, is he British? Is he German? He's Australian. He, he's Australian. He's cool. Australian, yes. Yeah, and he's not a multi-potentialite, right? No, he works in finance. He's an accountant, like he's trained accountant and works for a property investment fund. So your parents are very happy with him. Yeah, he's probably the golden child these days. <laughs> you know, successful, good job, very nice. I think he probably overtook my brother and me in being the favorite child. <laughs> that's fantastic. So that's settled. Mom and dad are happy now. Very happy. Um, and it's really funny as well. Even when I was like saying, oh, I want to move back to Germany. And now the question is like, yeah, but what about Josh? That's my boyfriend. Like, what about him? Would it be good for him? I'm like, how about the one that's good for me? I say I want to maybe move back to Germany. And they're like, yeah, but you know, is that really the right move for him? <laughs> so yeah, oh my he's a God. favorite child now, I think. <laughs> that's funny. So where, it's really funny. It's, it, we laugh about it, but it's sad in a way of, as well, of course, a little bit. Um, I always thought it was in our DNA. So apparently you're the proof, the first proof that it's not, and I consider you really as a multi-potentialite, right? 
well, maybe it's in a DNA, but maybe obviously the DNA is not influenced by other things as well, other than just our parents' DNA. Yeah. You know, it I could think be so. in my DNA, but certainly not passed on from my parents. <laughs> or it, it is even in the DNA of your parents, just thinking about, and especially for Germany, sorry for saying that, but I interviewed a few people in Germany and the culture in Germany is really, really, really focus, focus, be a specialist, and that's what you need to do. So maybe uh, your mom or dad is a multipotentialite, but never, never acknowledge the fact that that's really who they are, and they they put it away, and it's down there some somewhere, and and it was maybe. just not possible to but, let it go. It would be but interesting. You would think You'd think even now, now because they're like pensioners now, they have a lot of time on their hands, right? You'd think now that would be the time where they like go and explore these things, you know, because they have so much yes. time and but you know, that's when they can actually that. be like, yeah, explore, but, I don't know, try painting, try something new, but they're not. <laughs> no, no, but I've been thinking about that. So if in my life, if I would have succeeded as a specialist, God, I've tried. So if I would have succeeded as a specialist, then... I would have become one, right? Because then it's the proof, oh yeah, it really works and I need to do this. So your parents were very successful and, and they, they made it happen as a specialist. So maybe this was for one of them, like, oh, I succeeded. So this is the way to go. And moreover, explaining to you to do the same thing because for them, for him or her, it succeeded. Could be. I'm not saying it is, but just thinking of love. Maybe, but also I kind of would think that you, even if you're a successful specialist in your free time, latest when you stop working, that's when you would go and explore the other things. I agree. Really, I you agree probably, because probably it's all about the learning yeah. new things and discovering. Yeah. So, yeah. especially if I, if I had like all the time on my hands. I would like study everything. I would do like every online course there is. I would like learn about all these random things, you know. And so I think you'd still try and follow your interests especially when you but have I, but i think do. i think if if i would be a specialist and then after the age of 65 being a specialist i would be so exhausted on being something that i'm not really am i would probably also be like forget it you know this is it <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe i'll have, have a chat and see know. the parents and see if they have any other interests but uh... I don't, I don't, yeah it, it's interesting <laughs> it's so funny so wh what's happening what are your plans for the future wh what are you doing right now you're doing as a freelancer you do a lot of work so I have a different things like it's it's good because that you know that's a funny thing with my story because it's been so ingrained and really me trying to go back to that specialist path every now and then and it's just not working out for me. I think just two years ago, I had like really a sit down and I worked with a career coach who you know listened to me and who, who's objectively told me, look, if a one career is not enough for you, there's a thing like a portfolio career. Right. And that's when I started looking into things, you know, I stumbled over, obviously, Emily Wapnick's talk, as probably everyone did. Um, but that's kind of when I accepted that that's OK. I mean, as my boyfriend, he's like, there's no such thing as a portfolio career. I'm like, OK, I'm going to show you now there he is. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's OK. Yes, darling. So, yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of where I'm like, you know what, I really want to make it happen. And then I so at the moment, I run an awards consultancy, helping enter companies how to enter awards so that's not necessarily my passion but it's what i'm really good at because i work within awards in a permanent job for like three years <laughs> yeah. so i have a lot of experience from that and i'm i'm a specialist in that way but i don't want that to take over my life yeah. i also um started a travel startup in which i want to connect travelers with like-minded locals to for them to get better recommendations to really explore a city and you know when they want to come and visit a city not just to the instagram spots but actually know where to go know where the locals hang out and really experience the city as locals do yes. um so cool. working on that and then also i help small businesses with um marketing and i've recently enrolled that's going to start in may for a, a course um for climate change leadership. So I want to get more into that sustainability and climate change as well. So that's at the moment my <laughs> my rough areas I work in. Cool. And and 
so how, can I, of course, I'm not allowed to ask you how old you are, Christina, but I'm doing it's it okay, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, how old fine. are you? I recently turned 35. So it took me like 33 years probably to figure out I'm a multipotentialite and that's okay to be that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. and, and I'm guessing that knowing it now and doing these things, I'm 45, I'm 10 years older, that at some point later on in life, everything comes together. So maybe your specialism and your, your travel and your marketing and your climate change, everything comes together in one thing. And even one thing can mean different things, right? Exactly. And then you and still I'm... have 10 uh, uh, Instagram accounts, trust me. And, it, but... and it's really <laughs> funny. I don't know if you have that too, but I always have the feeling, because that's one, one thing my German friends always ask me, like, how can you do this? How can you not know what you got to work, you know, in a, in a month's time? How do you know not work what you're going to do? How, how can you live with that risk? And I just always have the feeling it's going to work out some way you know even if I quit a job that I didn't wasn't a fit for me and I don't have anything to fall back on I'm like I know something's going to come up I'm, yeah. I'm sure it will and I don't know if that's something you have as well but that's kind of how I feel it I'm just like you know what I feel if I actually follow my instincts something will come up if I do what I'm supposed to do opportunity will come up way is going to open and makes it, that makes it in a way more comfortable for me as well because if I if I try and focus and plan five year ahead, it absolutely freaks me out. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so it is, it's a more natural for way for me to just go with the flow and something will open. So. Oh yes. I, I, I hear you. And I always say it's good to be lost because when you're lost, it's the only way to find direction. You know, it's, you need to be lost in order to combine everything and go somewhere. And, and I also think that we, us multipotentialites are fearless because we're constantly connecting the dots. We're constantly exploring new fields. So we always know and know that whatever happens, it will be okay. Anyway, anyhow, it will be okay. And that's that's a big relief. This morning I, I was on a, on a clubhouse talk and it was about the future. And what thinking about the future does with your body, with your well-being. And thinking about the future in a negative way is really harming your, your whole system. But thinking to the future in a positive way does a lot of good for your health. And I was thinking as a multipotentialite, that's awesome. So maybe we are even more healthy people because we tend to look at the future as something that is rather positive and exciting because we know we're going to explore new things no matter what am i right yeah or at least not worry about the future like i don't know yeah. how often i actually think about the future because it's always hard for me to imagine the future but i don't worry about it either you know it's not that i kind of like oh what's going to happen it's just a, just kind of waiting and see what happens i guess and take it as it comes and then react accordingly I think so too. And I, and I think Emily Wapnick, she did a great job eh? in, 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 in transforming the scanner from Barbara Sherry into the multipotentialite and adding superpowers to it. I love that. And I think th this is one of the superpowers that she's also talking about, is that we're able to do that. And now in this world where the world is changing, where we have the, the, the COVID and the lockdown and the pandemic, we're doing well because we always look at the future as that it's very interesting and it gives us a lot of possibilities. Mm. And, and, and yeah, hundred percent. And it's been so because for me, obviously, when a pandemic hit, I just had to wanted to focus on the local way. And then obviously with travel, you know, <laughs> no one can travel, nothing. I was like, this is like the worst timing to create like a travel startup. I'm not going to give up on it but it can't be the focus. So that's when I really focused on building the awards consultancy and also the marketing. Cause I was like, now I can help people at the moment. I can use that time. You know, there are still some people who help, need help with that. And it worked, right? But it couldn't have done, you know, how much could have done pushed a travel startup in the last year? Not that much with COVID, but because yeah. I didn't have just that one thing I built, you know, everything on, I can easily pivot and find other ways. And I think that's actually one 
strengths in general for multi-potential life that companies are not valuing enough is the kind of being able, as you said, connecting with dots, because that makes someone so valuable. Because even if you come from a different industry, right, you have that different approach. That's where innovation comes from. If you can combine things, yeah, like, yeah. oh, I yeah. have seen this in a different industry. Why is that not, you know, approach we can just tailor to our industry or, you know, try that solution. So, and also, you know, the, the different people we're in touch with. I know people from so many different backgrounds, so many different industries. Again, there's so much potential in that as well. And, and that's, I think, what companies underestimate because obviously, you know, there's a lot of advantages of having a specialist, but especially in, in uncertain times, how good, is it, good is it, how good is it to have someone to be able to connect with dogs, to pull information and innovation from other, you know, experiences they might've had. And that really can help a company forward too. So I feel that's one point where companies really underestimate our small to potential lines. Wow, I couldn't have said it any better than you did. It's fantastic. And it, it's true, right? And people, be aware of that and, and listen to Christina and <laughs> think about that. No, it's important because we're, you're missing out on things. Um, Look at us. We're both like, oh, it's so cool to be a multi-potentialite. Everything is awesome. And we have superpowers <laughs> and we get it and we understand everything. It's not that great. No, uh, especially uh, not if you're trying to find a job because then it's really frustrating. <laughs> it is frustrating. And it's and for me, it's frustrating when people don't understand you and they label you in the wrong way, which harms us. I hate that. And I don't and I, I'm guessing for you the same thing being uh, in Germany and with your parents and everybody did an amazing job. Everybody is amazing, but you need to, you need to be yourself. And if that's not being acknowledged or recognized, it's pretty difficult, right? And I mean, it is like, for me, it's a lot of work in terms of building, working on my self-confidence, right? Working on me, believing myself first and knowing that's the right thing for me. Because mm -hmm. you have to have a really thick skin, especially if your close ones and your loved ones don't believe in what you do, yeah. you know, and then every time you do something, they're like, oh, do you really want to do this? And oh, is this the right thing? It takes even more courage and it takes even more persistence to be able to do that because you don't have the support. You know, it's, it's probably easier if you have parents who are like, that's great. You should go for it. You can do it rather than having anyone be like but why would you do this and yeah. what's the point and and are you sure so I, so that's for me it's kind of also a lot of working on myself work working on building my confidence up and my self-confidence up to be able to really fully reach my potential if you want to say in that way <laughs> and you did right working on it <laughs> working on it work in progress work in process <laughs> exactly <Work in> progress. <laughs> So cool. Well, what we will do is we will put information underneath the video about you, how people can be in contact with you, in touch with you. Um, I think a lot of multi-potentialites who just discovered themselves that they're in this situation would love to have a chat Happy with you and help. talk about this. Um, I know I'm curious about all the things that you're doing, so I'm happy to see <laughs> websites and, and, and the stuff that you do. We will put that underneath the video. Um, one final question. Um, if the world is changing as it is right now, and if it's really true and things will be different, what would be on your wish list regarding people learning, uh, learning about multipotentialites? What would you, what would be the number one thing like, oh, I, I wish that could change in the world regarding the difference think, between specialist and multipotentialized? I think it's just people in general having a more open mind. And I think in a way people will need to have it because the world is changing. And you know, with the youth growing up and not, if you think about it, there's no really secure job anymore with AI moving forward. There's a lot of no. jobs that are in danger of not being, you know, and there's a lot of specialists who will find themselves eventually be like, what I'm gonna do now? I learned that one thing you know, for my whole life. And now I'm going to retrain, find something else. So yeah. I think that will have to change anyways. But in the meantime, it'd also be nice, I think, for people to look behind the CV, look behind the names and really look at the person and trying to like see what the person can bring rather than what the job title potentially could bring because that doesn't say it all. <laughs> Love it. I think that's a, a, a beautiful way to end our interview and talk. Um, 
I love the fact, normally, you know, after an interview, it's like, oh, I want to do part two. I want to stay in touch with you. I know we will do <laughs> we'll part two, three, <laughs> four, five, we talk every week. And I love that. And I hope more and more people will follow us in the room. It's not about the, the quantity of people, but it's so amazing to talk to these people we don't know and they come into our room and we discuss and we share and it's exactly. i find it amazing and it helps to create a more open mind for other people and uh, so you're doing 100%. an amazing job thank you for that christina and thank you for doing you know putting all of this on and bringing us all together that helps from a personal perspective i can just say you know in my work in progress and finding my self-confidence and accepting what i am that really helps me as well so thank you perry cool it's my pleasure it's really really fun cool meeting you and let's keep up the good work and i will talk to you on tuesday perfect looking forward to it okay thank you christina <laughs> thank you bye-bye